Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the, the data track. So uh, in this session, we are have, we're happy to have uh, Maria Paskevich, who is a data science at uh, King.com to present with us a uh, work on using optimal decision making tools for balance in game economics. So Maria, as I just said, is a data scientist at uh, King.com. And she has been working in the game development industry for more than six years and uh, on a lot of well-known mobile titles such as uh, Cut the Rope, Candy Crush, Soda, and etc. She is uh, passionate about bringing data science perspective to improve user experience. As a data scientist, she is also interested in topics such as uh, segmentation and personalization, explainable machine learning models, alpha beta testing, optimization, and also Bayesian statistics. So without further delay, let's invite Maria to, to give the talk. So Maria, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Super excited to be here today. And my talk is about using optimal decision making tools for balancing in game economies. So, so a couple of words about me. The student has already said that I work as a data scientist for King and has been working for game development for more than six years now. An area of my interest is segmentation, personalization, A-B testing, Bayesian statistics, and also optimization. So this is something that I wanted to talk in more detail today. And before we go into optimal decision making, it makes sense to talk about what is an optimal decision itself. And let's try to look at it on an example. So please meet Tiffy. And Tiffy is about to throw a birthday party. So she goes to a candy shop to buy some sweets for her guests. She has a budget of $20 and there are going to be 10 people at her party. And one of her friends is allergic to chocolate. And also she loves gummy fishes. So once in the shop, Tiffy realized that there are quite some options <laughs> available for her. And there are six different types of candies in the shop. So she needs to get uh, to choose how to get maximum value for her budget. And chocolates uh, are cheap, but uh, one of her friends is allergic. So at least one of the candies should be not chocolate. Then she needs to have at least 10 candies to feed all the guests. And as I already said, she loves fish candies, so want to have at least one of this type. And striped lollipops are the most expensive type of candy, but there is a discount if you get two of those. So as uh, any optimization problem has uh, three necessary components to it. First component is an objective function to be maximized or minimized. In, in our example, we want to maximize Tiffy's pack of candies while still keeping it in the budget of $20. Second component is variables or features that can be manipulated to, to optimize the objective function. So for us, it's six different types of candies that are available in the shop and their prices, and we will be manipulating with their quantities. And the third component uh, is constraints or restrictions on the values of the variables. And uh, those for this uh, particular example could be that at least one should be not a chocolate candy, and at least one should be a gummy fish, maximum, uh, minimum of 10 candies in total, and maximum budget of $20. So taking all those uh, constraints and variables, uh, there are multiple uh, decision. Uh, so the optimal decision for Tiffy would be uh, first uh, complying with all the constraints and uh, then uh, take into consideration as many options as possible that uh, she can choose from and choose the one that gives maximum value, uh, which means maximum number of candies from $20. In uh, mathematical terms, an optimization problem is uh, the problem of finding the best solution from a uh, set of all feasible solutions. And uh, here, the best solution is uh, the one for which objective function is the best. By the best, we mean either maximum or minimum, depending on the concrete task. And uh, then there are different types of optimization problems, depending on the data that you're working with. For instance, they can be either continuous or discrete, depending on the type of objective function. For our 
uh, example with candies is a discrete problem because it's a discrete number of candies that uh, can be put within uh, uh, within the set of candies that she's buying. Then the optimization problem can be either constrained or unconstrained. And in, under, uh, in our case, it's a constrained problem because we have set of constraints that we put on the optimal solution, then uh, the problem can be either a single or multi-objective, depending on how many objective functions you're optimizing for at the same time. For our case, it's only one, so we want to maximize the value. And then the uh, optimization problem can be either deterministic or stochastic, depending on if there are any uncertainty in the data that goes as an input for an optimizer. For instance, if you are optimizing a function and take into account uh, forecasts for different variables, so there is some room for uh, some room for uncertainty. And then uh, algorithms for optimization will take into account this and uh, probable distribution of your data. So depending on the problem, there are different algorithms to solve it. And there are different uh, Python libraries that are also available to solve problems. So this is some uh, uh, like list of uh, some libraries that are available for Python, and uh, most of them are open source. Those are like uh, SciPy Optimize, Pulp, Google Tools, Novograd by Facebook, by Swarms, and Mystic. And uh, for our example, going back to Tiffy, let's try to solve her problem using Novograd. And we start with creating data set with all the prices for all the candies. So when we know the data set, we define cost function with all the constraints. So this is the first component of optimization problem. And this cost function uh, takes a list of uh, all the candies with amount of uh, candy in the set. So this will uh, calculate uh, cost function for each candidate for the optimal solution that we provide. So we uh, put as an input this candidate list of candies with, uh, with number of each candy in the set. After that, we just uh, take into account uh, the discount for two striped candies that uh, was uh, in the shop. So if you buy one, the price is higher than if you buy two candies. So we need to account for that. And taking this into consideration, we can calculate reward value, which is total cost of the candy set. And we sum it up to get one number that we want to maximize. And uh, there are some constraints that we want to put on on our solution. So we will add some penalties for violating those constraints. For instance, if there is less than 10 candies, we are adding a penalty. If uh, reward is more than 20, because the budget is $20, we also put a constraint on that and adding some penalties. Also penalties for not having fish candy, because Tiffy likes them, and having only chocolate candies in the set because of the allergic friend. So after uh, creating penalties for each and every uh, constraint violation, we uh, can calculate total costs that will consist of reward value. And then we, uh, we also uh, uh, put all the penalties there that will, uh, that will minimize total cost, uh, even if the reward value is quite high, but constraints are not respected. And then we are returning uh, negative of total cost uh, from this function, which will be explained on the next slide. Uh, after uh, defining the cost function that will calculate our candidate for an optimal solution, we need to generate those candidates. So we start with uh, creating uh, instrumentation for a Nevergrad uh, object, and uh, this one will be a transition choice uh, for a uh, uh, six elements, each one can uh, be from zero to five. So basically six candies, each one can be chosen in the set, either zero times up to five times of the same candy in the set. So this will be our, our function to generate the candidates. And after that, we 
uh, defining optimizer and uh, for this example we're just defining it with ngopt algorithm so this is the basic algorithm that developers of nevergrad uh, suggest to use in a very generic problem because this one will take into account parameters and the budget and try to optimize for that and we also define a budget of 100. So the budget in this case will be how many iterations we run, how many candidates we are looking at before making an optimal decision. After uh, defining that, we can uh, run uh, run uh, uh, the optimizer to get our recommendation, and then the recommendation will minimize our cost function. So we will basically run for 100 iteration and get uh, the recommendation that has minimum of cost function which was like a negative of our total cost. So basically maximum of total cost. And uh, here it is. We have our optimal solution for Tiffy and it's two chocolate candies, one blue for fish and four green. The total, uh, the total value of this candy pack is 11. So 11 candies inside, more than 10. And the total cost is uh, 20 sharp. So we are within the budget. So this is a very simple example of how to like, generate this optimal decision when you have a lot of options and constraints. And uh, what if we have <laughs> much more candies, much more constraints? So this is something that we were doing in Candy Crush Soda when we were using it to create optimal rewards for players in the game. So a couple of words about Candy Crush. It's a much free game that's been released in October 2014 with hundreds of million users to date and more than 7,500 levels. So the, the game is much free. That means that uh, the main goal is to match candies on the game field, creating combinations and solving puzzles. And uh, there are special candies, also we call them boosters, that are helping to pass levels. And those have uh, been giving players as rewards for completing in uh, different challenges. And each of those boosters has its price in in-game currency, in real money, or we also know this effect on uh, chances to win a level. So it's a big part of in-game economy for uh, Candy Crush uh, Soda Saga. And then <laughs> what is the in-game economy itself? Because it's a huge concept for every game. And that's something that uh, game designers are usually working on very closely uh, to create a nice experience for players. So a game economy is a virtual economy that configures all game loops uh, in the game with currencies, time loops, experience, levels, and so on. So on this slide on the right, you can see an example of a core loop for Clash of Clans. It's also a very uh, famous mobile game. So this, uh, uh, this picture is actually from uh, a blog of Mikhail Katkov, who is a um, game designer, and uh, he has very interesting blog, The Construction of Fun, where, we, when, where he is going through different games and actually reconstructs all the game loops and economies for the games and how it works to kind of uh, explain how games work from the professional perspective. So uh, because there are different elements, like for instance, even on this slide, you can see that there is elixir coins, sources and timers, and all these uh, things, they need to be in some what of a balance and different economy balance can create different players behavior within the same game, because the more stuff players, for instance, getting from a game mode, the more they can spend and so on and so on. So game economy may include difficulty for levels or game modes, then uh, soft and hard and game currencies and what players can buy using those currencies, timers for different game modes or features and in game items, their effect on the game and prices and also rewards for completing challenges. So rewards is something that uh, we were focusing on for this project and optimization of uh, rewards in the context of in-game economy for Soda would uh, mean that, first of all, Soda is a single player game, has a closed economy system, which means that players only get as many rewards as uh, the game give. Uh, there is no uh, trading between players, there is no market and so on. 
And by floating economy, with more items, you can ruin the balance. Uh, so the game becomes easier or faster to power through. So game designers will be challenged with creating uh, even more content. <laughs> and you've seen that we already have quite a lot of levels. At the time, and at the same time, you still want to reward players for putting time and effort. So the challenges are still worth taking and the rewards feel uh, fulfilling. So because of that, our game designers on a daily basis are faced with uh, basically an optimization uh, problem, how to uh, create an optimal set of rewards given all the constraints that they have. So then uh, we know values for each and every item in the game. And also we know for this, for instance, for this particular game challenge, how difficult it is, so what would be an optimal value of reward for this one. So how do we allocate uh, rewards in the most optimal way in this sense? So then it becomes becomes uh, somewhat of an upsec problem when we have different items that we want to put in this knapsack as like our reward bundle. And uh, then we decided uh, to try to solve it as an optimization problem, so we don't need to uh, just use a uh, human brain to solve it. So we can uh, translate it into components of the optimization problem. Uh, then our objective function would be maximum reward we want to give the players. And our variables would be types of items that should be included in the reward bundle. It can be pre-game boosters and game boosters, lives, and so on. Something that we do have in a game and we can give as reward. And also we may have some constraints. For instance, we may prefer a certain type of item over the other ones, or we want to have limitations on variety of items in the set. For instance, have higher or lower number of different items. And uh, we may have limit uh, on the uh, maximum reward, so how flexible we want to be from the ideal reward value that uh, should be given for this particular uh, uh, challenge. For instance, we are ready to go maybe plus minus 10 or 20% of this ideal reward in order to make a very nice combination. So solving this uh, uh, problem with Nevergrad would uh, look in the following way. So, uh, as input, we have maximum amount we are willing to give as reward. And this can be measured in in-game currency, real money, or the effect of on, on chances of winning a level, for instance. And uh, then we have constraints on rewards that uh, user of this system will put on, that may be a game designer. So types of boosters they want to include, maximum value of this booster, maybe they don't want to have different combinations at the same time. And all this information would be given to Nevergrad optimizer that on the output will give us an, optim an optimal set of rewards taking into account all the constraints. And it will work inside Nevergrad. It will work in this, uh, this way. So first we generate the booster set candidate. And uh, for this one, we generate set of boosters with all possible options. That booster uh, that mean that we choose boosters that should be included and we exclude uh, boosters that we don't want to use for this particular reward. So they don't even go as an input for the optimizer. And also we limit the maximum amount of each booster in the set. So something that we also want to have a power on. So uh, after that, we also add constraints for the candidate. And then uh, the constraints could be, for instance, that we need to prefer set certain type of boosters over other ones, or the final reward value should be in a certain range. As I mentioned, maybe from N to N percent of uh, the ideal reward that uh, we would want to give for the game mode. And uh, based on uh, the candidate and the, all the constraints, we can calculate cost function. And the cost function would be sum of all boosters in the set with booster value multiplied by amount in the set. And then uh, added all the penalties for violating constraints. So because uh, we are minimizing cost function, then adding uh, additional value to the cost function for violating constraint made it 
higher. That means that even like maybe the reward that would be optimal, giving a booster's value multiplied by amount than the set, but at the same time it violates some constraints, will have higher uh, final value than the other uh, candidate that will maybe have a bit lower value for booster value uh, multiplied by amount of in the set, but then doesn't violate any constraints. So it ends up with lower uh, cost function, and then it will be more optimal solution in this case. So then we, uh, what we do, <laughs> we repeat it X times to generate X candidates and choose the one that will give us minimum uh, cost function for, for uh, the set. And uh, you've seen in the beginning how it would look like in the code. So it's something that can be written in Python, but because uh, users for this uh, particular system uh, for us would be, for instance, game designers in the company. So people who don't necessarily want to code or maybe know how to code in Python and use all the libraries, uh, we decided that it would make sense to create a tool for them. So it's a Streamlit app that uh, uh, has an interface to as to generate input for the optimizer and here we allow to choose type of reward value for instance gold bars in on the picture and then how uh, much of this reward we want to give and then we have two types of limitations hard term limitations for the reward and additional options of soft limitations so hard limitations would just exclude this type of uh, item from the um, can, uh, from the creating candidates, while additional options will just add some penalties for violating these preferences. And also, we uh, allow to regulate number of iterations. So uh, the longer the run, the better the result because we generate more candidates and. Uh, because this system is not optimizing rewards on the fly in the game. So we uh, <laughs> kind of have the luxury of waiting a bit for getting better results. So we allow users to choose how long uh, are they willing to wait, maybe a couple minutes to get a better result and to choose from more candidates. So after setting up all the setups, they uh, get as an output a list of rewards that are optimal for this particular challenge, for this particular value. So that's, yeah, so that's something that I wanted to share today. And if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer. So Thank you very much, Maria, for this very interesting talk. So if you have any questions, please feel free to use the comment section to post the question. There might be a slight delay, so we will take the question later. But in the meanwhile, so I, I do have a, a, a few questions. So since this is an in-game economy, right? So you want you want to inject the, the rewards to the user and then you want to incentivize them to, to buy stuff. How do you avoid inflation? <laughs> Well, actually, by, by optimizing. So this should be a balance between, you know, uh, rewards versus effort that players put mm -hmm. inside it. So we need to make sure that the effort worth the rewards. So that's something that I was talking about. Like when we're defining a value, it can be like either defined in, in game currency or defined, for instance, in chances of winning a level or like how much this particular reward help you to advance in the uh, game. And we make sure that everything in balance. So this is kind of encoded in the value of the rewards itself. Yeah. Right. So basically you use the you use the challenge itself, the difficulty itself to use as the... Yeah. So, I see. So uh, another, th another thing I want to ask is uh, because you, you mentioned that you want to enhance in the end the experience of the, the user. So how do you measure this? user experience mm -hmm. or how do you define this in the in the cost function so we define it by uh, value of the rewards so this is something uh, we want to maximize right so we want to give the maximum value mm -hmm. for their for the reward that is not higher than something we are willing to give so that means that yeah it should I be think. as close as possible to yeah 
I see. So you assume the reward as the as the expectation. Yeah. yeah. No, because I was wondering if there are like ways to because you have the app data, maybe you have ways to measure engagement and so on. So, <laughs> yeah. So and then regarding uh, uh never got. So I, I wonder like um, how flexible is it for the user to to choose the algorithm. So are the algorithms provided usually swarm based or ensembles and so on? So for end user, now we just go with this default algorithm. We're trying several different types, but the like the end the end result for my particular case doesn't change that much from like different relevant algorithms for this type of problem. So for now it just uh, runs on the default one. And the only thing that uh, we allow to user to tweak like from the interface is number of iterations we are running right. and like actually input of all the different types of items they want to have. Yep. Okay, great. There seems to be no more questions coming up. So I guess we can uh, end the talk here. So again, uh, th thank you very much for Maria for this uh, very interesting talk on how uh, the, the game economy is working in uh, work in King. So uh, this is the last talk before lunch and we will we, we convene for a keynote at 1pm. So thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.